Hey, and good morning. Uh, I am in my store again, and uh, I've been getting a lot of questions recently about airbrushes. Uh, as I start using more airbrushing techniques with my miniatures, um, more people are asking me about how to get started with airbrushing. So I thought I'd do a series of videos specific to airbrushes. And to start with, I thought I would cover some basics about uh, types of airbrushes and how to choose which airbrush might be best for you. Now I brought in uh, some of my own airbrushes. Some of these I've had for many, many years uh, as I have been airbrushing for a long time. Uh, but while I say that, um, I'm actually fairly, only fairly recently using the airbrush on a regular basis with my miniatures as opposed to just uh, larger terrain projects or vehicles. So uh, kind of keep that in mind to a certain extent. And while I do have a lot of uh, experience with airbrushes, I haven't tried everything and I don't claim to know everything. So um, use this as one point of reference and uh, feel free to look around, um, read reviews, see other YouTube videos, and um, hopefully this will just be one of the pieces of information that you can use to make a good decision for yourself. So, first off, um, I want to cover one of the most fundamental basics of airbrushes, and that is single action versus double action. Now, um, a single action airbrush, and I don't have an example here, uh, I had intended to have one, uh, but it turns out that the only airbrush that I sell, which is the single action airbrush that Games Workshop carries, I'm out of right now, so I can't show it to you. But uh, that is actually a good example of a single action airbrush. And many of you have seen it. It looks like a little flamer uh, from Warhammer 40,000. Uh, not a bad airbrush at all, um, but somewhat limited as single action airbrushes tend to be. They, uh, they kind of come in two forms. The external mix, which is the, uh, the Games Workshop one, is an external mix brush. And what that basically means is the air and the paint come together outside of the airbrush. Uh, and then there's internal mix, which where the paint and air come together inside the airbrush. Um, the nice thing about single action external mix brushes is that they're super, super easy to clean um, because there's not a lot of paint getting caught up inside of the brush itself. You really just need to clean the tip and uh, and you're good to go. They tend to be workhorses, really good for doing um, base coating um, for a little bit larger projects, for doing vehicles, um, but not so good for doing fine work at all. Uh, so that's just one thing to consider. At this point, most people who are using airbrushes for their miniatures are using double action brushes. Now, um, oh, I didn't actually mention the difference between the two. Uh, single action means that when you push down the button, with that single action, you are uh, starting the air and the paint flow at the same time. With a double action brush, when you pull back on the trigger, that opens up the paint, but when you push down on the trigger, that opens up the air, and you generally push down and start the air first and then get the, the paint flowing. The reason why that's good is because you actually get control over how much paint is coming out on the fly. So if you, if you need to change the amount of flow that you have uh, while you're doing a project, you can just pull back or push in and you'll get more paint or less paint, which also means thicker line, thinner line, or uh, a more uh, thorough coating versus a a more diffused coating. So, and that's why most people tend to use uh, the double action brushes, but don't let anybody tell you that there's no reason to get a single action brush. So when I was working on professional projects, both at Imagineering and on uh, Starship Troopers, uh, single action brushes got a lot of use. And the reason is because you could, th they were workhorses and you could blow anything through them, but really for larger projects. but. Like when I was in Imagineering, they used to use single action brushes all the time to do things like coat glue 
over uh, the top of foam uh, sculptures in order to seal them in preparation for painting. So uh, it's, it's a tool that would be nice to have uh, in your toolbox. But again, um, it's not something that a lot of people who are focused on doing uh, small miniatures work uh, are using right now. All right, so aside from that, you have a number of choices in terms of features. Uh, your most basic feature is where is the paint coming from? Now this is my Iwata Eclipse. I've had this for, well, since the mid-1990s. Um, it's bottom feed, which means that the paint is drawn up from the bottom of the airbrush, uh, and then it comes through and goes out the front. The nice thing about bottom feed is that uh, you have a detachable cup or bottle. Um, in this case, I, I pretty much just use the cup exclusively, uh, which means that you can have several colors standing by. You can spray, pop out a bottle, pop in a new bottle, and keep going, um, usually with thinner in between so that you can blow out the old color. Um, and this is the one I've been using the most for years and years and years. The downside to the bottom feed is the fact that uh, cleaning out in here and where it comes up into the tip is kind of a pain in the butt and can create problems if you're not, you know, cleaning it on a regular basis. Uh, I've gotten used to that, but uh, I don't like it. <laughs> At least not anymore, now that I have gravity feed. Now, this was actually one of my earlier brushes. This is an Iwata uh, HPC. Uh, they don't actually even make this specific style anymore. They do have the HPC, but it's HPC+. Plus. And really the difference is uh, some of the accessories on the back. And so the back is going to look more like this with this cutaway uh, that allows you access to your needle. As well as a, uh, a guide in the back that you could, well, I'll explain that when I get to that. Anyway, this is gravity feed. And gravity feed means that the paint doesn't have to be drawn up from the bottom, but just goes straight down into the airbrush from the top and it provides you a much easier way to clean and there's uh, there's there's not too much uh, issue with the uh, the paint getting caught up in here it's actually really easy to clean these out and if you're only using small quantities of paint you don't really need to be swapping bottles on the fly so uh, the gravity feed is pretty much ideal for doing miniatures and what you'll find most miniatures painters uh, are recommending. The, um, yeah, so the, there's really no downside to this except for the fact that um, you don't have the same array of uh, bottle choices that you could. Like this one, you know, I could conceivably have a large bottle of paint down here. Now, that's not something that a miniature painter needs, but when I was doing more production work, that was ideal. There is sort of a, an in-between uh, in between the gravity and the bottom feed is side feed. This is the HPSB. And again, this is one they don't make anymore, but they do make the HP SB+. Uh, again, more features in the back here. Um, obviously, the, your, uh, your material is fed through the side as opposed to being drawn from the bottom. It's sort of a compromise between um, bottom feed and gravity feed. I honestly don't know. I ended up getting this one um, because somebody said it was broken and it turned out it was just dirty. Um, and I never really saw the appeal of this, but I'm sure there's a reason to do it. You can have it either on the right or left side, and uh, it comes with a couple of different options for your cup. Um, I do like the fact that... Uh, 
that you can actually do a really small amount of paint through this, but you can also do that with a gravity feed. Now, with some of the newer models, they do give you the option to uh, remove your uh, cup on the top of your gravity feed and replace it with something much larger if you're going to be doing um, if you're going to be doing a lot of spraying. So uh, this is the Grex TG3 and it's a pistol grip which I kind of like um, but I'm having trouble getting used to because I've spent too many years doing the other uh, type of airbrush uh, design. This has one of those other features I was talking about. Now the idea with this is that let's say you uh, want to limit the amount of travel that your needle has. This will provide a stop so that at certain points in your painting you're like I don't want to have a line that's any wider than this. Well you can preset that and then when you're spraying it's not going to you don't have to finesse it. You know it's going to stop where you want it to stop. I haven't actually used that feature much, um, but it's kind of nice to know that it's there. Uh, also, this well, it's probably a good time to mention uh, tip size as well. Um, the the Eclipse that I've been using uh, for years is a 0.5 millimeter uh, tip this one anyway. They also make it in a 0.3. Um, 0.5 is fine for larger projects, not so good for smaller ones. Uh, you can learn to get a pretty fine line with this and you can finesse it um, so that you can get in fairly tight. But if you're planning to use it directly on 28 millimeter miniatures for doing um, any work where it's going to require getting in really tight. I've seen some guys doing um, even work with faces. That's just crazy talk. Um, but even just doing highlighting on, uh, let's say, Space Marine armor, something like that, where you you need to be able to hit a pretty small target. 0.5 is going to be too small. This. And these other two Iwanas that I've shown you are both 0.3 millimeter. Now that's closer to where you want to be, um, but it's not as close as you can get. Uh, the This is my latest airbrush. This is an Iwata Custom Micron. Now the Custom Micron can do, uh, is 0.18 millimeter. And uh, I've only been using this brush for a short time, but let me tell you that the, the difference between even just a 0.3 and a 0.18 was huge. So huge that I, I feel like now I'm finally at a point where I'm gonna be using the airbrush all the time uh, with my miniatures. Now 0.18 isn't even as small as you can go. Uh, Harder Steenbeck makes uh, a number of brushes that have 0.15. I don't know how big a difference that would be between the two, but I could definitely see um, I can definitely see where going smaller is going to be better. Now let's talk a little bit about um, price. Uh, obviously, the airbrushes that I have are primarily Iwata. Iwata tends to be fairly expensive in terms of you know in compared to um, almost any other brand of airbrush. Uh, the Grex, it's not cheap either. Um, a lot of guys are, are starting out with um, Chinese brushes that they find on eBay. They're cheap enough to where, you know, you, you definitely want to consider that. But here's, here's something to think about, and probably the most important thing to think about, and that is if there is a problem with your airbrush and you need to replace a part, are you going to be able to replace that part? Um, let me tell you, the, the tips 
and needles on these things are very delicate. Um, I work without the crown tip on here, which is really, you know, the main reason for this part to be on here is to protect that needle. And by the way, that's one of the features I like on this Grex is that that comes on and off. It's just magnetized. It's not screwed in. But I digress. Anyway, the, the that needle and that tip are going to bend and or break at some point. It's inevitable. Um, are you going to be able to replace it or, you know, with your $20 Chinese airbrush, if that happens, are you going to need to replace it? Um, honestly, if, if you've spent $20 on your airbrush, replacing the airbrush is probably cheaper than replacing parts on my Iwatas, but there you go. So these are also precision instruments, um, and you, you want to consider whether or not you trust that the company that you bought it from uh, is working at the tolerances that you, you need to be working in order for these to be functioning properly. Uh, I personally would recommend uh, buying from a brand you trust and maybe spending a little bit more to get something that you know is going to work properly and if it doesn't you know you can get it replaced. Uh, I've never had a problem with any of the airbrushes that I've owned um, getting, uh, having a, having any issues out of the box. Now, so my recommendation um, isn't brand specific. I only ever had one airbrush that I truly hated, and that was the uh, the Testers Aztec airbrush, and that was mostly because it doesn't allow you to get in real. Uh, in, into the tip and needle assembly in order to clean it properly in my opinion. So uh, as far as airbrushes that I've owned, and I've owned Badger, Pache, Testers, uh, Iwata, and now Grex, um, they'll all work. They, you know, they'll all get the job done to uh, one extent or another. So it's, it's really, you can, you can shop around. If I were to choose an airbrush right now, I would definitely get uh, a gravity-fed um, airbrush and I'd try to probably find the one that was as small a tip as I could get. Uh, Harder Steenbeck actually makes an airbrush that will do both I think 0.4 and then 0.15 and it requires a, uh, a swap of the tip and the needle uh, for example, this is the, the TG3, we'll do 0.3 and then you can get the 0.5 um, tip and needle for it so that you actually have one airbrush that can suit a number of purposes. That's probably the best way to go, something like that. Um, if I were thinking that I, I didn't want to do anything more than base coating for miniatures and then using it for a lot of vehicles, I'd probably just get an Eclipse. This airbrush has uh, served me well for many years, and uh, they're even better now than they were before with more features. And as far as the Iwata line of airbrushes go, it's fairly inexpensive. But you know, there's certainly other choices to make there. Uh, that's just my own my own feeling on the subject. I gotta say, I absolutely love my custom Micron. Absolutely love it. I felt like it was a life changing experience, and. Uh, it's probably more expensive than it needs to be, but I don't care. I like it. Um, but take a look around. Again, look at other reviews. Uh, see what other people are using. Um, ask questions. And you can always ask me questions, too. Leave questions in the comments, and I would be happy to ask anything that you need to know um, that I have an answer for. Uh, to help you make this decision. Now, again, I'll be doing some more videos in the future, so keep an eye out for those. And I think perhaps next time we'll do something on uh, what to do once you've gotten your airbrush. And that's it for now, and I'll talk to you later.